All right, good morning, everyone. We will start in a minute. So before we start, if you have any question, please ask. Okay, let's see what we did last time. We were doing some uh, linear algebra stuff last time. Um, well, we talk about the determinant of a matrix. Um, and if the determinant is non-zero, then the matrix has an inverse and Finally, we were talking about this system of algebraic equations. So we have some number of equations and we wanna solve this for x, x1, x2, xn. And we write um, this in the matrix form. This here, A is called the coefficient matrix. It's called the coefficient matrix. for the system. And um, to solve the system, there are two ways. You can use Gauss elimination method or you can find the inverse of the matrix. Well, finding the inverse of a matrix uh, is not very easy. Uh, so we will um, deal with uh, Gauss elimination method today. Let's talk about this now. All right, this is lecture seven. And we will be talking about Gauss elimination or row reduction. Gauss, Gaussian elimination. method or we also say this uh, row reduction well let's say uh, let's first define this elementary row operations on matrices <clears throat> elementary Draw operations on matrices. Well, basically, what we are trying to do is like, um, let's say you have, later we will do this formally, but let me try to explain what, what is the purpose here. So let's say you have a matrix like this A, B, C, D, E, F. G, H, I, and so on, okay? It can be of any dimension. It doesn't need to be um, a square matrix. So what you do is you do some operations and you eliminate some terms, okay? And then at the end, you get something like this. One, for instance, zero, zero, zero, one, one. I'm just making up some simple matrix like this, zero, zero, one, okay? Well, to reduce in this form, we use elementary row operations. We will define this in a minute, but what is the purpose here? Once you do that, basically what it says, uh, if you have like variables like x1, x2, x3, like this, 
originally we had equation like that a x1 plus b x2 plus c x3 is let's say equal to zero and another one d x1 plus b x2 plus sorry e x2 plus f x3 is equal to zero and another one here is equal to zero so to solve this equation we reduce this into this one and that means basically in x1, x2, x3, x1 is equal to zero, for instance, with this one. Okay. Then x2 plus x3 is equal to zero. And this says x3 is equal to zero. So this is much easier to solve than this one. Okay. That's why we reduce uh, the matrix in a simpler form using row operations and then solve the system of equation, okay? That's the purpose. Uh, sorry, can I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> Why do we write that the x1 is equal to zero? I didn't get the logic. Um, well, later we will say, let's say this is a homogeneous equation like that. Um, we have this here, okay? So we have a homogeneous equation, and on the right hand side, we have like zero, zero, zero here. Okay. It doesn't need to be zero, it's just an example. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, well, there's one question two times three no it's not well this this is like maybe let me write here this is like x1 x2 x3 when you multiply this you get like the first row first column so it's going to be x1 the second one here second row uh, the first column it's going to be x2 plus x3, okay? And the last one is x3. So you get something like that, okay? Is it all clear? Great. Okay, let's, um, that's the purpose, but let's see how we can get into that form. Okay, so. Well, elementary row operations are the following. They are very simple operations, like first of all, uh, we can multiply a row by a constant. This is C times Ri, okay? And write this in the same row, Ri. So you basically multiply row. Well, this is the ith row, okay? I didn't say, but you multiply the ith row and write it is an it row, it row of the matrix, okay? So this is the first one. The second one here, you interchange the rows, ri, so c is a constant here. Okay? You interchange row i with row j, So interchange it and j draw. Okay. And finally, the last one, you multiply a row by, by a constant c, okay, r i, i draw. And you add, a, add this to J row and write it in place of J row. Okay. So this is the last row operation.
Well, let me give this definition. So if you obtain a matrix from another matrix by row of operations, then you say these two matrices are equivalent. Okay, so A, a matrix, two matrices, let's say, two matrices, A and B are called uh, row equivalent in that case we denote this by the notation this notation okay they are row equivalent um, if one is obtained one of them <laughs> is obtained from the other one by applying row operations. <clears throat> From the other by elementary row operations. Okay. Let me give you an example, a simple example. So take a matrix like this, one, one, one, minus two, for instance, we have this matrix. And let's say this is row one, okay? And this is row two. And what we do is I will, apply some row operations to make this matrix simpler. Uh, what I mean by simpler, I will explain this later, okay? So let's make, for instance, this term here zero. How do you make this term zero? Well, if you subtract this one from R2, then you get the first entry of the first the second row will be zero, right? So basically I do the following. R2 minus R1. This will go to R2. So you will write, well, that was my, that was my A, let's say, okay. <clears throat> one, one, then, zero here, minus three here, right? Minus two, minus one, minus three. Well, let's make, for instance, this one, one, okay? How do you make this one by? How do you make this one by one? Well, divide this one, this one by minus three, and you will get one in that entry, so basically r2 over minus three and you get something like this one one zero one you can even make it simpler you can make this term zero by subtracting the second row from the first one so let's now say R2 minus R1 and write it in R1. So it becomes the following, one, zero, zero, one. <clears throat> and you get this matrix. Now let's call it B. Here we obtain B from A by using some row operations, right? And B is equivalent to a here. Hajam, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, if we write uh, that we subtracted uh, R2 from R1, is it still true in the last step, step? R2 from? 
No, in the last step, hocam. In the last step here, what was yes. your... If we write uh, R1 minus R2. Oh, we... that's, that's, that's my mistake. It should be R1 minus R2. That's right. Thank it's, you. Thank you, yeah. It's... Uh, okay, so we subtract R2 from R1. So R1 minus R2, right? All right, uh, any question with, with this? Uh, okay, there's one good question here. Can we um, make this procedure for, for an arbitrary matrix? What, what, what it means basically, can we make can we get such a simple form at the end for any matrix? For any non-singular matrix, yes, you can do it. Even for an arbitrary dimension, uh, for any square matrix, you get identity matrix, okay, at the end. You can do it. That's the theorem. It, it's, well, we will use it, but we will not prove it. But it's true. You can reduce, um, any non-singular square matrix in this identity form by using elementary row operations. Any other question? Ah, uh, yeah. So if we get one matrix from another using some operations, we yeah. say that this is row equivalent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. So here, all the matrix matrices are row equivalent to each other. Okay. In this uh, sequence, for instance. Mm -hmm. This one is also, this one is also row equivalent to A. All right, let's um, now define this, uh, what's the row echelon matrix definition. Well, a matrix uh, N by M matrix is called a row echelon, or sometimes row reduced, same matrix if it satisfies the following. First, the leading term of each row is one. Leading term. Leading term means the first uh, non-zero entry, okay? First non-zero entry of each row is one. Next, all entries which are below the leading one are zero. All entries which are directly below a leading one are zero. So what it says basically, if you have, let's say one, two, something like this in a matrix, then this all will be zero under the leading one, okay? This is what it says. Next. 
if i is less than j, the then the leading one on so i must be to the left of leading one on so j well this means what so let's say you have one, zero, two, something like this, one. So this is the leading one in the first row, okay? In the second row, for instance, the leading one is here, and that's fine, okay? So this is what number three says. This is the first row. This is the second row. So the leading one on the second row, it's or leading round, leading one on the first row is on the left of it's it's the left of the second leading one, right? Second row leading one. So this is good, but if you have something like this. This is not good because the leading one here is not to the left of the leading one here, okay? So this is not good. And number four, If there are rows, there are rows with zero entries only. Um, then they must be they must be the last rows, okay? So this is what it says. If there are some zeros only, uh, zero rows in the matrix, uh, they could be like this one, one, two, for instance, zero, one, two, for instance, and zero, zero, zero, zero, zero, zero. This is fine. Okay. But if you have something like that, this is not fine because this zero row must be in the last, uh, in the last row. Okay. So this is not good. All right, so these are the rules. Uh, and if a matrix satisfies all these properties that it's called in row echelon form, and our purpose is to make any matrix by using some elementary row operations, uh, reducing this row echelon form, okay? So we will reduce any matrix in this row echelon form. We will try at least this. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. About the fourth condition that we wrote, condition number four. Condition number four, yes. Uh, at the example, the first example that you write, one, one, two, zero, one, two, mm -hmm. uh, there is one, and below the one, there is a one. Is it because it's not a leading term? Yes, the leading ah, okay. term here is one, and below everything is zero, okay? 
and on the leading term in the second row is one, below everything is zero, fine. There's no okay. problem with that, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank the you. term here is not leading one. This is not, okay? This is not leading one. The second one, okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, um, any other question? I actually have one. It may not be, I don't know, it may be dumb, but why do we have zero, zero, zero terms as it means like nothingness? Oh, that, well, that, that means a lot. Uh, well, um, later we will try to solve the equation using this um, algebraic equations, some system of equations. And those zeros means you have some free, free term. Okay, so you have, in that case, the system has infinitely many solutions. Okay, because it's like this. Let me give an example, a basic example. Let's say you have one, two, zero, zero, okay? Times x1, x2 is equal to zero, zero. You want to solve this, okay? That means what? That means basically x1 plus 2x2 is equal to zero. This follows from the first row, first column, okay? But from this, zero, zero, nothing will follow, right? It's, it says zero is equal to zero, okay? That means basically x2 is free. It can be any number, okay? And x1 is equal to, from this, minus two x two, okay? So the solutions are basically, you have x two, any number, and minus x, two x two. So these are the solutions. And x two can be any real number, okay? You get it? That zero means you have a free variable. What? And you have infinitely what? many solutions. Okay, I do not understand the free variable, like... Free means it can be any number. Okay. okay. Because there is no condition on the sec which comes from the second one. Second one says basically zero times x1 plus zero times x2 is equal to zero, which is zero is equal to zero. That means there is no condition on the second variable. So there is only one equation, which is this, okay? But there are two variables. One equation, two variables. That means one variable is free. You can say also x1 is free, and you can also say x1 free here, and x2 is minus x1 over 2. That's also fine, okay? Oh, okay, now it makes sense. Thank you, Ota. All right. Okay, good. Um, well, let's do some examples and you'll get it better, I guess. Well, look at this matrices here, one, two, zero, zero, one, two. Zero, one, one, zero. Two, one. One zero one zero one zero zero one zero zero zero zero here. So which ones are in here row echelon form?
last one. Okay, there is one question by Umut. Uh, right, and in the previous example, yes, both can be free variable, but that's, we don't have a general rule for that, okay? Um, the last one is in row echelon form, right? This is in row echelon. Maybe let's write echelon form. For short, I will write REF, okay, REF. What about the first one? Right, so the first one is also in REF, right? The leading term is one, below it, everything is zero, there is only one entry. In the second one, leading term is one here, right? And everything below is zero. It, for this one, leading term, leading term. These are leading term, and below the leading term, everything is zero, and all zeros are the last rows. Fine. Um, what about this? Is it in REF? If, if it is changed, it can be. Right, it can be in REF, but right now it is not because the leading one here is on the right. It must be on the left, right? This is the second row. The second row of leading one must be the left of the first row of leading, first leading one. So the second leading one is on the right of first leading one. That's why this is not REF. Not. REF. What about this? Well, in the first row, leading term is two, not one. It's not equal to one. That means it's not REF. All right. Any question with any of this examples? Well, this nice theorem says you can uh, make any matrix, you can make it in REF. Okay, so this is the theorem which says basically any matrix can be row reduced by using elementary row operations. until a matrix in REF is obtained. So you can always obtain REF form all right for The question about the exam, uh, it's not clear whether it's going to be face to face or uh, right now we we we be announced it as as a face to face. OK, so those exams will be face to face, but that may change. So it's not clear yet. OK, so this um, this de depends on the department's decision. OK, all service courses will follow the same rules. So it's not clear yet what, what is the uh, method of uh, exams, but we will announce hopefully soon. All right, uh, let's now let's talk about um, system of equations and we will solve the system of equations. So 
this is 7.3 system of linear equations. Well, the exam dates are written on the syllabus. So let's say we have, remember a system of equation, it's written like this. We have A11, X1 plus A12, X2, A1N, Xn, is equal to B1. And um, you have M equations. A, M, N, X, N is equal to B, M. Well, alternatively, you can write the system Let's call it star. So the star can be written with the matrix. It's A, X is equal to B. A is the matrix, X is the vector for unknowns, B is the vector for the non homogeneous part. Uh, maybe let's write clearly. What is A here? A is the coefficient matrix. A11, A12, A1n. AM1, AMN. Okay, so this is my coefficient matrix. What is B here? B is for this part. Okay, so B is basically a vector or M by one matrix. B1, BM, okay. And X is also the vector for unknowns, x1, xn, okay? So instead of working with this system, initial system, we will work in the matrix form, okay? Writing the coefficient matrix, um, we will solve the system. Well, to solve the system, we will reduce this A into REF. So the idea here so using row operations we convert the well, we call it augmented matrix. I will explain what this is. Matrix. What's the augmented matrix? It's basically this A, what we integrate this, we include this B in A, okay? So it's going to be like A11, A1N, AM1, AMN. This is A. And you have one more column for Bs, B1, BM. Okay. And this is called the augmented matrix for the system. 
And you apply the row operations as in the matrix, usual matrices, okay? And you convert this uh, into um, R, E, F, row radius echelon form, okay? Row echelon form. Then we find the solutions. So that's the idea. Uh, so we just add, add the B column, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do an example. So let's look at the system. So solve the system. Uh, 3x1 minus 2x2 plus 2x3 is equal to nine x1 minus two x2 plus x3 is equal to five two x1 minus x2 minus two x3 is equal to minus one <clears throat> we will solve it so let's write the augmented matrix well The augmented matrix is basically the three minus two, two. The coefficient matrix first. And you add one more column for nine, five minus one. Well, so what we try to do here is to make this part, okay, this part in REF. At the same time, of course, we will uh, work with the last column, nine, five minus one, and see what we get. Well, here uh, we have, well, you can, there is no unique way to do that. Okay, you can follow different ways and you obtain the similar, same result. Here we have one and we want the leading one in the first row, so you interchange the rows. So what I will do is basically, I will interchange um, R1 and R2. And we get basically, one minus two, one, five, three minus two, two, nine, two minus one, minus two, minus one, okay? Now I have a leading one here, this is good. Well, here we have three. To get rid of this three, what I will do is, I will multiply the first row by minus three and add two second row. And similarly to get rid of this two, because below the leaning one, all must be zero. To make this two zero, again, I will multiply the first row by minus two and add two the last row. Okay, so we get basically, um, minus three R1 plus R2 will go to R2, okay? And 
minus two r one plus r three will go to r three row of three. Okay, so what you get from this is basically the first row is same. The second row of this will be zero now. Minus three times minus two, it's six minus two, which is four, okay? And minus one here, zero, three, minus four. And here we have minus six, and here we have minus 11, okay? We get that. Well, so below leading one, we have only zeros now, this is good. The next thing is basically we want to make um, we want to make this term one. Uh, to make this one, uh, you can either divide by four or you can subtract this one from that one. Okay, and then you get one and second as a second leading one. Okay, so. This is going to be R2 minus R3 will go to R2. And you will get basically R1 will be the same. R2 will change now. So you will subtract R3 from R2. It's going to be 0, 1, 3, uh, 5 here. Our 3 will stay same. So it's going to be 0, 3, minus 4, and minus 11. Now, this is also good. The next thing is basically you want to make this term 0 because it is below the leading 1 make it zero, okay? To make the zero, I will multiply R2 by, by minus three and add two R3, and this will go to R3. So you will get simply uh, one minus two, one. This is same. R2 is also same, zero, one, three. Five and this is going to be zero, one, uh, minus nine, minus thirteen, minus fifteen, minus twenty six. Okay, and finally, um, oops, sorry. So this should be zero, sorry. This should be zero. Okay. Uh, well, the only thing remains here, minus 13. So you want to make this one. So you divide by minus 13. R3 over minus 13 will go to R3. So you will get basically uh, 1 minus 2, 1, 0, 1, 3, 0, 0, 1, this is 2, 5, 5. Okay. Now, this here is an REF, and I can write the corresponding system of equation now that means basically so let's call it double star here so the corresponding to double star we have the following well this is like
x1, x2, x3, okay, so we get basically the system x1 minus 2 times x2 plus x3 is equal to 5. From the second row, we have x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 5. From the last row, we have x3 is equal to 2. Okay, so we already get x3 here. And using this, we get that x2 is 5 minus 6, which is minus 1. Okay, and x1. from here, x1 is 2 times x2 minus x3 plus 5, which is 1. OK, so we, we find out that x the vector is basically the solution vector is one minus one and two. Any question with this example? Is there can we go for yeah? Can we go for a second here? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get how we get at the third step. Like there is four in the middle. How can I explain? R two minus R three part. The first one? Uh, or... No, not the interchanging. This is after it. Let me see. This one? Uh, next. This one? Yeah. How did we get at the center of the previous matrix? We have four. And after we have one. At the same yes, place. because you, you subtract uh, R3 from R2. Ah. Four minus three, OK? OK, yes, I see it now. Thank you. Right. Any other question? Uh, well, this one here, you cannot make it 0, basically. OK, so the question is, why do we make, why did it make, why didn't we make it 0? We cannot do it. Without changing this, we cannot make this zero. Okay, there is no way you can make it zero. So we make we made it a uh, leading one. Okay, leading one. Any other question? All right, let's give a break here for uh, ten minutes. So let's meet at uh, eleven forty-five.
All right, welcome back. Well, now let's uh, talk about inverse of a matrix. How do you find it? So this is inverting. An invertible matrix. Well, remember that if the determinant is non-zero, then the matrix has an inverse. Now we will see how we can find the inverse uh, of an invertible matrix. So the idea is the following. Let's say we have an augmented matrix like this. We have A, A is the invertible matrix. This is A, okay. And we wanna invert A. So what I do is, on next to A, I will put, this is N by N, let's say, an identity matrix, I N. So this is the identity matrix. And using some elementary row operations on A, elementary row operations, if your A is invertible, you can always get to that form. On the left-hand side, you will have identity. And on the right-hand side, you will get the inverse, okay? So that's the idea. So basically, you reduce your A into REF. The REF will be identity in that case for an invertible matrix. And now next to identity, you will get uh, the inverse. Let's do an example and see how this works. Uh, let's start with an easy one. Find the inverse. Off. <laughs> A, which is two by two, one, two, three, four. Well, this is an easy one to deal with. All right, so let's find the inverse of this. Well, I will write this with the identity next to it. So it's gonna be like one, two, three, four. Next to this identity, one, zero, zero, one. Okay. Now using some elementary operations on the left-hand side, I will get Identity on the right hand side, I will get inverse. So to get the identity on the left hand side, what you can do is this is already good. One is here, fine. So next thing would be uh, make this term here zero. How do you make this zero? By simply use row one, multiply this with minus three, okay? And uh, add to row two minus two, three, R1 plus R2 will get you basically this one. One, two, one, zero, minus three, it's zero, minus two, 
minus three, one. Okay. Uh, sorry, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, why in the first uh, row there is a change between zero and one? Like in the identity. Why we have the identity here? No, no, no. There was one zero before and in identity method in the first row. Right. And after it is zero one. Oh, that, that, that, sorry, that's my mistake. Thank you for this. It's one zero, of course. Yeah. All right, um, let's continue now. We will make we will make this term here one. So you divide this by uh, minus two. At the same time, you can make this zero, okay, by adding second row to the first one. So it's going to be r two plus r one here and r2 over minus 2 will get you basically following. do we need to make this two zero well in principle in ref you don't but here our purpose is to make this identity okay get it. okay if you are solving a system you don't but if you are finding the inverse you need okay so that's basically one, zero, minus two, one, first row, okay? And this is gonna be zero, one, three health, minus one health, okay? And this will get you basically the inverse, so, this part is now the inverse of A. So A inverse is minus two, one, three half, minus one over two. Well, basically we are done here, but what you can realize, this is nothing but one over minus two uh, here if we have four minus two uh, minus three and one. okay. Um, well, if you realize that minus two here is basically the determinant of the original matrix A, okay, four times one minus three times two minus two. And the entries looks like the original matrix as well. So what you do is you here you have four one, and here you have one four. That means you interchange this two, okay? And you take the negative of this two, okay? So this is what you do. Well, in general, you can say simply, For a matrix like this, A, B, C, D, the inverse of this is one over the determinant A, D minus B, C times the matrix. You interchange A and D, so it's going to be D, A. Okay. And you take the negative of B here and C here, okay? You can check that when you multiply this with the original matrix, you get the identity matrix, okay? 
So for two by two matrices, the inverse is easy to find either by this formula or you can do this row operations. Any question with this? All right, let's do another example with three by three. So now let's say we have a matrix like this, one, one, three, zero, one, two, three, five, minus one. And we will find the inverse. <clears throat> All right, let's do it. So in a similar way, we will put an identity matrix next to it. One, one, three, zero, one, two, three, five, minus one. And next to this, uh, identity matrix of dimension three, one, zero, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero, one. Well, what we need to do is here, the leading, leading one is fine here. Later, we will make next to it zero, but first let's get rid of this one, three here, okay? Because in the identity matrix, we have zero here, right? Leading uh, the first entry of the third row will be zero. So let's get rid of this. How do you do that? Well, basically minus three R one plus R three will get you basically. These are same. The last one will be zero. Uh, minus three times one minus three, it's two minus 10. And it's gonna be uh, minus three, zero, um, one. Okay, so we get this. So we are trying to make left-hand side identity. Um, well, here, we need to get rid of this two, okay? You can use row one or row two. Let's use row two here. So minus two R two plus R three. You will write this in row three and in row one, you would like to get rid of this one here, okay? So let's write here R1 minus R2. And this gets you what? Let's see. One, zero, three. Oh, sorry, one, zero, one. Three minus two is one. One minus one, zero. Okay, this is R1 minus R2. The second row is same. Zero, one, two, zero, one, zero. The third row here, minus two times R2, it's a zero here, zero here, minus four, minus 10, minus 14. Minus three, minus three, minus two, sorry. Minus two this, and one. 
over a clause. Well, next you divide the row three by minus 14. And this gets you basically following R1 and R2 are same. Zero, zero, one. Well, it's going to be three over fourteen, or one over seven, minus one over fourteen. Well, finally, we would like to get rid of this two here. Okay, we will make it zero and this one as well. To do that, we will use R3. So basically, in the first row, let's use R1 minus R3. In the second row, we use minus two or R2 minus two R3. R2 minus 2 R3. And let's see what we get. 1, 0, 0. And this is uh, R1 minus R3. 11 over 14 minus. 8 over 7, 1 over 14. This is the first row. Okay. The second row is 0, 1, 0. R2 minus 3, 2 R3. So it's going to be um, minus 3 over 7. Uh, 1 minus 2 over 7, 5 over 7, and 2 over 7, uh, 1 over 7, so 1 over 7. R3 is same, 0, 0, 1, 3 over 14, 1 over 7, minus 1 over 14. So you see here, this is identity, and this matrix is the inverse. Okay, so A inverse is here, given by on the right hand side. Any question with this? After we we are all done with row operations, so mm -hmm. if we like uh, multiply the whole matrix A inverse with. 14 to simplify it. Will uh, it I mean, uh, will it still be the inverse? No, of... it's not. It's not. It will be another matrix. Uh, you cannot, when you multiply matrix with a constant, you will get another matrix. Okay, so it's not the inverse anymore. So inverse is unique here. Inverse of a matrix is a unique matrix. Okay. If you, like, if, if you like, give me a minute. If you like, you can write it like this. You can take 1 over 14 out and write it like 11 minus uh, 16, 1, and so on. You can write it like this, okay? This is fine. Burada mesela 14 determinantı oluyor değil mi hocam? Ya olmuyor da bilir ama sanki öyle gibi. Onu tam kesin söyleyemiyoruz. Ha, yani, evet. 7 de olabilir mesela. Ha. Ama ha, yani, o, yani ona benzer bir şey olacak. Evet. Yani o. A'nın inverse'ü 1 bölü 14 ile birlikte. Yani, evet. İkişliğin evet. sağ tarafın totali değil mi hocam? Evet. evet. Teşekkürler. Evet. So the inverse here is 
the whole matrix here, okay? Uh, Hojam, why did we write identity tree on the inverse of the matrix? Because it is the identity matrix, right? So what you do here is remember to find the inverse. Um, where is it? Here. You start with this, okay? Do some elementary row operations on the left hand side. You have identity matrix. The dimension is three because it's a three by three matrix. Okay. Yes. Okay. I see. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Well, there is also there is there are, there are some other ways to find a inverse but none of them are easier than this one okay so i will not go into those methods there is this adjoint method uh, which reduces um, the finding of the inverse by computations some some computations of determinants of the minor uh, matrices but the uh, well, to me, it's it's more much more uh, difficult than this one. So um, we will not teach um, in this course. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, but I have a new question. Yeah. Uh, is it always necessary to write uh, like in this form one one divide by something? No, like no, no. I just give an example. You don't need to. You you can live it as in the first form. You don't need to write like one over something and blah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I wrote it because someone asked, okay, that, that's why I wrote it. Um, otherwise, uh, you, don't, you don't need to write here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? All right. Um, maybe let's get rid of this because otherwise it looks like we have to write like this. This is better. Okay. Well, now we know how to find the inverse, so we can solve the system of equations um, either by some reducing to some echelon form or finding the inverse. We can solve the system of equations. And later, we will talk about system of differential equations. And for this, we need to know more. Uh, and we need to talk about um, some stuff related to matrices. These are called eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, let's talk about this now. Eigenvalues and eigen. Maybe on a new page, let's do it. Well, what's an eigenvector? Let's define this first. So suppose that you have a matrix, uh, M by N matrix. Suppose that it can be invertible or not, but it's a square matrix, okay? So suppose that A is N by N matrix. Let's take a non-zero vector, a vector V is called eigenvector for A if 
So this is a vector, okay? A times V, you multiply this matrix with, with this vector, you get another vector. It's equal to lambda. Lambda is a constant. It's a complex number. Lambda times V, okay? Uh, for some lambda complex. It can be zero as well. It can be a real number, but in general, it's a complex number. Here, this lambda is called eigenvalue corresponding to this eigenvector. Um, lambda here the Greek letter is called the eigenvalue associated to V, okay. Well, this is the definition. If A V is equal to lambda V for some non-zero V, it's called eigenvector. And that lambda is called eigenvalue. Well, the question is how do you find this eigenvector and eigenvalues? So let's talk about this now. Finding eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Well, we first find the eigenvalue, and corresponding to this eigenvalue, we find eigenvector. Eigenvalue means what? It's basically A times. V is equal to lambda for some lambda, lambda V. Well, here lambda is eigenvalue. This implies A minus lambda identity matrix. Okay. A is M by N, so it is identity N times V, right? V is the vector, remember, is equal to zero, right? Lambda V, take lambda T to the left-hand side. Identity times vector is the vector itself, so you get this, right? And here, remember, V is non-zero. This is non-zero. But this implies what? This implies A minus lambda I is not invertible, right? Because if it has an inverse, then V must be zero because multiply left hand side with the inverse then you will left with V and right hand side zero times something zero. So if there is an inverse of A minus lambda I, then V must be zero, but V is non-zero. We assume this, right? Is this clear? Uh, actually, can you please explain this? Yeah, part? what I'm saying is we have this equality, right? So if there is an inverse of, if there is an inverse of this part, let me show this part. So let, let's say there is an inverse of this, this part. So that means what? A minus lambda I inverse times A minus lambda I times V. You multiply with the inverse left. It's equal to zero times, something to the inverse, right? 
but this is zero, zero times something is zero. It is the zero vector basically, okay? Zero vector. But this side, you multiply a matrix with the inverse, so it is identity. Identity times V is V. So what you get is basically V is equal to zero. But we know that V is non-zero. That means inverse doesn't exist, okay? Uh, yes, thank you. You know? Good. Yes. All right. So if there is no inverse, that means what? Remember that if a matrix has no inverse, then its determinant is what? Right, it's zero, right? A minus lambda i must be zero, okay? So basically, what we showed here, if you have an eigenvalue, then this determinant must be zero. And basically, you solve this equation. So solve this, solve it to find eigenvalue lambda. And after you find eigenvalue, we will find the eigenvector. Okay, let's do an example. Find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. One minus two, three minus four. Okay. Let's find eigenvalues first. Well, so we need to check the determinant of a minus lambda i. So what is a minus lambda i? I is two by two identity because a is two by two, right? It's two by two matrix. So it's basically one minus two, three minus four minus lambda times i2. Lambda times i2 is basically lambda zero, zero lambda, right? Identity is diagonal is one. So you multiply with lambda, diagonal becomes lambda. So it is basically one minus lambda minus two, three minus four minus lambda, okay? And we will find the determinant of this and equalize the zero to find lambda. So determinant of a minus lambda i two is basically, it's a two by two matrix. So it is easy to find the determinant. You multiply one minus lambda by minus four minus lambda minus minus six. And from this, we get basically lambda squared plus three lambda plus two, and this is equal to zero. And you solve this for lambda, but this is nothing but lambda plus two times lambda plus one, okay? So lambda is equal to minus two and lambda is equal to minus one. There are two eigenvalues. So there are two eigenvalues. Lambda, let's say lambda one, okay? The first root minus two 
and lambda 2 is minus 1. Okay, any question up to here? Now we will find the eigenvectors corresponding to those eigenvalues. So eigenvectors for lambda one, which is minus two. Let's return to the eigenvector here. So eigenvector, you basically solve, okay? So if you know lambda, so given lambda, solve this system, to find uh, eigenvectors. Okay. We. So if you know lambda, then you will solve the system. It's a system of equation. It's a two by two equation in our example. And you find we. So it's basically a minus lambda i times v is equal to zero. So we will solve this a minus lambda is minus two i times v is equal to zero. Okay, we will solve this. Well, basically, you will plug here in this matrix here, you will plug lambda is equal to minus two. So maybe let's put here star by star directly. It's lambda is equal to minus two. It's, it's gonna be three minus two, three, minus four, uh, plus two, minus two, right, this. And um, you will solve the system. So on the right hand side, you have zero, zero, okay, zero vectors. Well, you can reduce this in REF, so it becomes um, R2 minus R1, and you can also do the following, R1 over three, and what we get is, one minus two over three, zero. R two minus R one, it is zero, zero, zero. Okay, so this tells you basically, if you say V is a vector like this, V one, V two, the corresponding equation is, v1 minus 2v2 over 3 is equal to 0. Okay. And v2 or v1, one of them is free because we don't have any other equation. Let's say v2 is free. So v2 can be any number you take. So this tells you. Um, that v1 is equal to 2 times v2 over 3, okay? So you can write 
V is the following. V1 is two times V2 over three. And V2 is three. Or you can write as V2 times two over three and one. Here V2 is any real number. Well, of course, there are infinitely many such vectors, right? We have infinitely many eigenvector for minus two because V2 can be any number. All right. Well, let's also find the other one. So this is the eigenvector. Maybe let's put here for, this was for minus two. So just for the notation, let's put here uh, V for minus four, okay? Minus, a uh, minus two, sorry, minus two. No, uh, I'm sorry, can we before this, uh, can you please explain how did we get by star matrix? Three minus two, three minus two. Uh, it's basically from this. A plus oh, okay. two I, okay. So you instantly made the subtraction and write this in one. Right, matrix. right. Okay. We already have it here. A minus lambda I, we find it here, okay? So you plug lambda is equal to minus two in this, in this one, okay? Got it, thank you. Good. Uh, there's one question, is it, we, is it V2 zero? No, it's not, V2 is not zero. Uh, V2 can be zero as well, uh, but it doesn't need to be zero, okay? Because this here tells you this equation, the, here it's, it tells you that zero times V1 plus zero times V2 is equal to zero. It's, it says basically zero is equal to zero, okay? It, does, it doesn't put any condition on V2. It can be zero, but it doesn't need to be, okay? Well, the thing is, oh, okay, maybe I should say, in principle, it can be zero, but here, eigenvector can not be a zero vector. If V2 is zero, it becomes a zero vector. That's why maybe we should say here, it's not zero, right? Okay, otherwise it, it's, it, it's not an eigenvector, right? Because eigenvector is a non-zero vector, okay? Well, for the other one, let's do it quickly. For lambda two, which is uh, minus one, we will find the eigenvector. So this one, a minus, so a plus basically i, okay. We will solve this is equal to zero. So A plus I is simply two minus two, three minus three, okay? Zero, zero here. Well, again, You apply elementary row operations and um, the last row will be zero. You can, for instance, do this minus three over two, minus three over two R1 plus R2 will get you, and maybe this here, R1 over two 
the following one minus one zero zero zero zero okay so it says from here if i say this is for minus one v minus one okay let's say this is the vector v1 v2 okay so the first row here tells you v1 minus v2 is zero okay v1 minus v2 is zero so basically v1 is equal to v2 and the solution is the eigenvector for minus one is basically uh, v2 is free so v2 v2 or you can write as v2 1 1 okay any question um, uh, why there is a sub minus one at v it is the notation for eigenvector That's of minus one. Well, eigenvalue right Right, right. Eigen minus one is the eigenvalue, right? So this is the notation eigenvector. You don't need to use this notation, by the way, but v1, v2 is for real numbers, and uh, I need to introduce another one. So uh, eigenvector corresponding to uh, eigenvalue. minus one okay any other question right so there is one question to v2 here and v2 above here they are different right they are different they are arbitrary real numbers they are not related to each other okay so when we solve this eigenvectors they are not uh, related to each other for different eigenvalues, we will have different eigenvectors. Okay. All right. Any other comment, question? Okay. Let's stop here. I will see you on Friday. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you, Jim. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you.